Hi, my name is Avinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I want to teach you and give you tips on how to play King of New York. A new take on King of Tokyo that adds a whole new dimension and is a lot of fun. What's great in King of New York is how it starts very cute and gets brutal very quickly, just like it looks very simple. And the more you play it, you realize it's a lot more complex. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. It helps a lot. In King of New York, you play a big monster competing with other monsters as big as you to take control of New York and become the King of New York. When a player reaches 20 victory points, or if it is the last monster standing, the game stops immediately. Now let's look at how you set up the game, starting by picking one of these monsters. They're all the same, just different designs. Once you've picked the one you prefer, place it in front and take the corresponding monster board. Set the life points, the one with the heart, to 10 and the victory points to 0. Place the game board in the middle of the table. This represents the city of New York with its five boroughs, Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx and Manhattan, divided in three zones, Lower, Midtown and Upper Manhattan. Take all the double-sided buildings and unit tiles. You shuffle them all together and randomly form stacks of three tiles. Building side face up and place three of these stacks in each borough of New York. For Manhattan, place one stack per tier. Note that all the buildings with a durability of one have an infantry on the back. Buildings with a durability of two have a jet and buildings with a durability of three always have a tank. In a normal game, you don't look at the buildings under the top one. They are only revealed if the top one is destroyed. Place the two special cards, Statue of Liberty and Superstar, face up beside the board. Shuffle the rest of the cards, deal the top three cards face up. Place the deck face down next to the board. Put the six black dice next to the board and set aside the two green ones. And put the green cubes called energy cubes on the side and finally place the special tokens for easy access. All players are gonna roll the six black dice and the player with the most claws will start. In case of a tie, these players have to roll again. At the start of the game, players can place their monster in any borough except Manhattan. The first player places their monster in the borough of their choice. Then going clockwise, each player places their monster in any borough, keeping in mind there can be no more than two monsters per borough. Now let's see how we play King of New York. Each turn consists of five steps. For now, the first player will start by rolling the dice. In this game, the dice are quite unique. They have destruction, celebrity, ouch, energy, attack, and health. Roll all six dice at the same time. Put those you want to keep on the side. So here, I keep these two destructions and roll these four. Now, I keep one more destruction and roll these three. And finally, I end up with five destructions, which is pretty cool, and one claw, which is useless for now. Whichever combination you go for, you can only re-roll twice. Now, let's see what you can do with these dice, starting with the energy. For each energy you have at the end of your turn to collect one energy cube, you can save them from turn to turn so you can buy cards with them. When you roll claws, you deal damage to monsters who are either in Manhattan or outside Manhattan. So if you're in Manhattan, all the monsters in the four boroughs outside Manhattan take that damage. And if you are in one of the four boroughs outside Manhattan, you damage all the monsters in Manhattan. For each claw received, monsters lose one heart, which can be brutal in some rounds. If a monster's hearts get to zero, they discard all their cards and energies and retire from the game immediately. If you roll claws and there's no monsters in Manhattan, then you don't inflict any damage. Also, a monster in Manhattan can yield if being attacked, but they still need to take the damage before they move to another borough. Each heart allows the monster to heal one lost life, you cannot go above 10 hearts unless you have a special card like Carapace, which lets you go up to 12. Now, let me show you how to destroy buildings or eliminate units to gain health, energy and points. All buildings and units have a symbol indicating the reward you will get if you destroy it. High rises and tanks have blue stars and give points. Power plants and jets have green lightnings and give energy. And hospitals and infantries give hearts, as shown here. That white number, 1, 2, 3, or 4, represents the building or unit's durability. 
It is the number of destruction you need to roll to destroy it. When you destroy a building, turn it over to its unit side. Place it in the same burrow and collect the reward. If there are still buildings in the stack, it reveals the next one, and you can destroy it immediately if you have enough destruction remaining. When you destroy a unit, collect the reward and place the unit in front of you. If you have enough to destroy a building or a unit, you must do so. However, you are not required to optimize your role. In this example, I'm in Staten Island with three buildings visible, one high-rise one, one high-rise two, and one hospital. I roll four destruction and decide to destroy the high-rise one and high-rise two to earn three points. I only have one destruction left, so I don't have enough to destroy the buildings or units revealed. Note that you can only destroy units that were revealed in previous turns, not in the same turn. Now, let's have a look when you roll three stars, also known as celebrity. Nothing happens if you roll less than three, but at three or more, you get to take the superstar card and place it in front of you. You immediately score one point and one more point for each star you've rolled beyond the first three. So for four stars, you gain two points and three points for five stars. From now on, as long as you have the superstar card, you score one point for each star. As soon as another monster rolls a triple star, he steals the superstar card from you. Now let's see what happens when you roll the ouch. If you roll at least one ouch, the military opens fire and you take damage. If you roll one ouch, the units in your borough attack you. You take one damage per unit tile in your borough. If you roll two ouches, the units in your borough attack you and all the monsters in your borough. So here each monster in Brooklyn would take one damage from the infantry in Brooklyn. If you roll three ouches, all the units in the entire city attack. All monsters take one damage per unit tile in his burrow. So here Mantis takes four damage. Moreover, when you roll three ouches, the Statue of Liberty comes to life and teams up with you. Take the Statue of Liberty card and place it in front of you. As long as you have the Statue of Liberty, you have an extra three points. You lose these extra three points as soon as another player takes the Statue of Liberty. These are all the dice actions. You can resolve them in whatever order you like, but each group of symbols must be resolved together. Now you can take the second step of your turn, which is to move to another borough. Most of the time it is optional. If there's no monster in Manhattan, you have to move your monster to lower Manhattan on the two to four space. If there are five or more players in play, and if there's only one monster in Manhattan, you must move your monster to lower Manhattan. So the first player, first two players, when you have a five or six player game, have to move to Manhattan at the end of the first turn. And the only time you can have two monsters in Manhattan is when you have five or more players. If you are in lower Manhattan or Midtown, you must move up to the next zone. If you're in upper Manhattan, you no longer move during this phase. Now, if you're not in Manhattan and there are two to four players in the game and there's already one monster anywhere in Manhattan, you have two choices. You can just stay where you are or you can move to any borough apart from Manhattan which doesn't already have two monsters in it. So being in Manhattan can be very cool, but it can be very dangerous as well. So balancing this is a really cool aspect of the game. You earn one point when you first enter Manhattan as shown here. In addition, when you start your turn in Manhattan, you also earn one point and one energy if you are in lower Manhattan, two points and one energy if you are in Midtown, two points and two energies from upper Manhattan. When you're in Manhattan, you cannot use hearts to heal yourself, but you can use them for card effects you can also use cards, units, or buildings to heal yourself. If you're attacked while you're in Manhattan, you may yield and flee Manhattan. If this leaves Manhattan empty, the attacking monster will need to move into Manhattan during his movement phase. Note that a card that damages you is not considered an attack, so you cannot use it to yield. Once you have resolved your dice and move actions, and if you have enough energy, you can buy cards. This is entirely optional. If you have enough energy, you can purchase any of the three face-up cards. You can even buy more than one card. Each time you buy a card, immediately reveal a replacement for it from the deck. The cost of the card is in the upper left corner and is paid in accumulated energy cubes. The card describes what it does and its effect. There are two different types of cards. The keep cards, which you keep until the remainder of the game, the discard cards you resolve immediately and then discard them. You can also spend two energy points to sweep all the shown cards to reveal three new cards.
You can purchase and sweep in any order you want as long as you have enough energies. Now, this is the end of your turn. Some card effects are resolved in this step. It is now the end of your turn, so you hand the dice to the player on your left as the game proceeds clockwise. The game ends immediately when a player reaches 20 victory points or is the last monster standing. Now, if a player reaches 20 victory points but also reaches zero in health, they will still lose. There can be no ties in King of New York and if all the monsters reach zero in health, they all lose. Now, my tips to win a King of New York are if you see a couple of monsters with low health, don't hesitate to deal some claws or ouches and get rid of a few in one shot. Check out the cards and collect energy quickly. If there's some good ones, get them. Superstar is very powerful and can give a lot of points. You cannot let it stay with one player too long. Don't let a player run away with too far a lead. Team up with other monsters if necessary to take that player out. It's tempting to take out buildings, but be careful of burrows with too many units because you'll either need to get them out or move to another burrow. So that's how you play King of New York. It's a very exciting and fun game. As soon as players start taking some damage and you get some cool cards, it's electrifying. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is right here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.